Tad Talk. This is season one, episode four, and um, this is our first technically challenged day. Everyone's got unstable in, or unstable internet connections, but I think we can hear everybody, so at least we're going to get something. Three amazing guests uh, on the show today. Uh, well, we've got two right now. One of them's um, fighting to get on it, but we will get there. First, a good friend of mine, someone that I've looked up to for many years. Um, we're now in the same industry, as in a uh, talent agent and so on, but Mike's, uh, Mike's definitely one of the best out there and a great friend. How you doing, Mike Maloney? Oh, good morning, Jerry. How are you? Good, 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 good. We, I, um, I, you said those nice things. I was thinking, oh my, you know, I think I got to... I, that can't be about me, but thank you very kindly. Very, very generous, sir. Absolutely. And, and what I owe to you is you were the person that introduced me to Tesla. So I <laughs> joined the club. Amazing. It's a uh, we are going to struggle through this uh, internet connection stuff. And if we don't get too far, we may have to abandon this one and do it a little bit later. But we will get through because this is one of our best lineups. Second on here is uh, a guy I frequently say to people is the funniest man I've ever shared a stage with. But he's not that. He's the funniest guy I've ever seen. Uh, just stunningly funny off stage, on stage. Welcome to the show, Mick Miller. Mick. Eric, a good evening from the UK. From Blackpool, right? Yes, Blackpool. Well, Pulse and LaFilde have moved up in the world. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Mick has a really tremendous bad, history. Man. Say again? We've got seagulls dropping bread into us now. <laughs> if anyone didn't hear that, he said we've got seagulls dropping bread into us now. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Mick is, uh, Mick's been around uh, for such a long time and uh, we had the pleasure, Anne and I had the pleasure of working with him on Central Pier in Blackpool. 1992, and Mick just reminded me was um, Anne was going through the IVF uh, treatment at that time, and of course Nick was born, and now he's 26. So, 1992. Uh, he's brilliant. We've got some people already joined the show. Uh, looks like Paul Boardman's on. Says Mick, he's still my all-time favorite comedian. I'm with you there. Oh, Paul, Paul great, great comic himself, by the way. I know, brilliant, brilliant. Um, and Anne, Anne just says, I love your shirt, Mick. It's Popeye. <laughs> olives, olives, olives at the back. Okay. <laughs> well, um, we are waiting for our third guest to join us. He's there on audio, but we're just waiting for video. That's going to be Richie as soon as we get that going. But um, I'm going to go to Mike for a second. Uh, well, uh, the, today is uh, March 31st. And um, of course, we're smack in the middle, or at least I hope we're in the middle of the, uh, the COVID-19 problem that's around the globe. And it's hit many industries, but certainly our industry, Mike, it's just decimated it with no warning. How are you, uh, how are you handling it? I, I mean, we, we don't have any options. We try to, uh, uh, this, we've never seen anything like this ever. And, and I imagine, Maybe in, before the polio vaccine or something, the, the world went through something like this. But it's it's been horrific for business and for everybody. And I I think the only thing we can do is keep our heads up and and look for brighter days that are coming. Absolutely, I, I think one of the good things to come out of for me is to see our entire industry just come together so quickly. Um, yeah. For all all angles, you know, I mean, you and I have worked in an industry where a lot of people don't work well together. You and I work so well together. Yeah. And, um, but it's great to see so many people coming together and um, really respecting each other because we're all struggling with it. Correct. Correct. Well, you know, it's, there's, there's so many, um, so many, there's, unfortunately, I mean, I think when this is all said and done, and, 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 and Terry, you and I do, we do the bookings that we do and the productions that we that we book, but 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 it's such a large industry, you know. I've I've seen with even the major players, the Live Nations and the AEGs and everything, and, and the major the CAAs is going to 
probably be a little attrition here and there, but but it it'll it'll make us tighten our belts a little better and, and work a little more efficiently, I think. So when it's all said yeah. and done, I, I I'm looking forward to that day when when every door is open and and everyone is singing and every musician is playing and every comedian is telling jokes and and the world's back in a better place. Yep. Yeah, and we'll look back hopefully with fondness on how we dealt with it. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's, that's the goal. With you, Mick, um, I know firsthand that uh, this, the calendar just gets wiped out like that, right? Well, it, it's the Blackpool itself. You know, Blackpool, it's like, it's like our, our mini Vegas, you might say. There's, sure. there's what, a thousand guest houses, hotels. They're just gone. It's just, uh, it's dread. Well, we can't go out and see it, you know, that's the thing. Mm. It's just devastating. And, and as you say, losers are going daily. You know? So, um, just got to keep, uh, keep doing yeah. that to me, dog. No, absolutely. I know. Twice. Say again? He's bit me twice. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, while we wait for Richie to come, I'd love to um, get into the careers a little bit. Because, Mike, um, you've uh, you're well respected as a talent agent, but I know you, uh, you've got some musical chops there that go way back. And I think that um, but we've, we've loved with the guests finding out things. I've got some stuff about Mick I want to talk about from years ago. Because um, I don't know if you know, because Mike, 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 even though he's American, is a big football fan, and unfortunately, he's a Liverpool fan. And um, by the way, <laughs> we good on you. We may may get into that a little bit later. Mick, <laughs> Mick was a footballer. He played for, for Port Vale, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But um, Mike, your career before the before the booking, before you do this, tell us about it. Oh, you know, it was. Uh, I, Probably know in, in the seventies in Southern California there was a lot of work for musicians and we all had jobs and you worked six days a week and you played cover tunes and you played new original material and you you beat the streets but I I, I played guitar and and worked for some wonderful bands in the in the uh, in those days um, the, the funny thing I I uh, I, I, I saw a, a a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine now, and his name is Joe Cannon, and Joe's a total, total character. He sings and plays guitars and tells bad jokes, and I thought, oh, heck, I can do that. And so I knew just as many bad jokes, and I could forget the lyrics just as quick as he could, you know? So uh, we started doing that, and like, like you, Jerry, we ended up on ships and ski resorts and, and uh, had a wonderful career, but uh, I always uh, enjoyed this side of the business, you know, in, 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 a, in a good way. And I saw it as a good transition from uh, performing. Still love to play and sing, still love to irritate people. And so, uh, you know, once in a while, get out and do that. We, yeah. We've got to play together sometime. There, there's, I was just about to say, we, that, that has got to happen. I don't know where or when, um, but we've got to do it for sure. Well, that, that, that's what we'll know. That's what we'll know, Terry. That the the that the world is back to normal, and people will come out and see two gentlemen that are <clears throat> middle aged and uh, singing and playing playing uh, their old songs. You know. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. No, there's there's a lot to be said for that. It's funny actually. We we saw um we talked about two middle aged or older guys. We went to uh, Nick and I went to Madison Square, saw Billy Joel last year, and. Him and Bruce Springsteen were at the front there, and it was interesting. I think we got Richie with us. Richie, can you hear me? Well, we can see him, but he can't hear me yet. We will get there. Uh, this yeah. is unstable, but that's that's cool. That's cool to know that the um, Mike. We've got quite a few Liverpool fans coming on here saying they love you. I have no idea why. <laughs> well, well, the the funny thing, uh, Terry Jan. Of course, you know. Jan from your office in Florida, Jan Standing, who's a dear old friend, and she and I worked on the same ship together back in 19, <laughs> you know, so. So back in 18 what? 
<laughs> no, we, but you've got such a great team and, and Jan, of course, being one of them, you know, and of uh, course my wife is Jan and inadvertently I've sent uh, your Jan a few emails directed at my wife and but anyway, it's another story. But, yeah, we've seen them. <laughs> Those have been interesting. Uh, what a shame we're struggling with the connection today because this is going to be a great show, but we'll, uh, if we, uh, if we don't fix it, we'll go through it and we'll do it all again because it's uh, pretty amazing. Mick Miller, how are you, mate? I'm superb, yes, superb, yes. So, Mick, I'm going to go back a little bit because, I, aside from knowing you, um, you was a goalkeeper, right? Yeah, I was, I was signed. I, was, I played for Liverpool Schoolboys. Okay. And I got signed, signed by Sir Stanley Matthews to play for Port Vale. I, I was a goalkeeper and I was 16. And two years as, as an apprentice, and then uh, two years as a pro. But being a goalkeeper, I was five foot nine. And that, I was five <laughs> foot nine at sixteen, and five foot nine at twenty, which was too small. Yeah. And basically, I was, I was, I was crap. <laughs> no, it's. Uh... But I had, I had, I had, I did a youth trial, so I was in the England youth squad at the time. Um, there was me and Ray Kennedy. I, I, uh, Ray Kennedy, who went on to play for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, so I, I had a good, uh, a good four years. So um, good for you. You know, when you when you're twenty when you're twenty years old and you're told, you know, that you're not going to make it, it does uh, it does sting a bit. No, yeah, it does. I mean, if the football thing didn't work out, the rest of it did. It was, did you go on to Pontins after the football? Yes. Uh, well, Ray Kennedy, uh, we both got a free transfer, uh, which means you're not very good. Um, and Ray went to Arsenal and he got like £20,000 out. And I went to Pontins and I got five pound a week, a blue coat and a very funny rash. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh boy. You know, back then, um, I don't know when the Pontins thing was, but I remember, and, and I still now, if I uh, sit down with a drink and flick through old YouTube stuff, I, uh, I, I invariably find myself uh, Searching for the comedians, the show, which was amazing. Well, you that was great. I, I did. I uh, I did a blue coat for two years and learned a bit of the trade, and then I went on the road. And then, as Mike was saying, then the big clubs were about. You know, where you had the big band, you had an eight-piece band, uh, a girl singer, speciality act, comedian, and then the top of the bill. And they were all around the country, all around the UK. So I did them for two years, supporting people like uh, Tommy Cooper. And yeah. I, I actually, I actually at, at uh, Batley Variety Club, I supported Buddy Holly. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Just one wow. show, just one show. That was, that was my, first, uh, my first professional gig, really. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but you know, you go back. You go back with the working men's clubs, and that's such a great way to, to to get your trade. I mean, it was a gig after a gig after. A gig oh. after a gig. Amazing. Yeah, they, they were fabulous days. You know, well, they, they still are. You know, the what the clubs that have gone with the times are really doing well now. You know, yeah. you know, they're yeah. putting good shows, um, and that's where you learn your trade. I think. Yeah. Still, you know, you've got to, we're gonna, um, you know, you've got to learn it somewhere. We're going to cut to a video um, for the viewers here. We've got uh, Mick came over here um, uh, and did a, a show for ITV Last Laugh in Vegas with a bunch of guys, and it was such a great trip. And you know, I actually want to tell Mike something before this because I, I've seen Mick. Uh, I'm talking to Mike now, I've seen Mick work uh, in front of American audiences, and there's such a big difference between UK comedy and uh, and US comedy. And Mick is hands down the best I've best UK comic I've seen it sitting in front of American audience and having them just rolling over. He's got that way of reaching naturally. But we're gonna we're gonna cut to a quick video. Um, 
where we uh, little 15 second thing of Mick here in Vegas last year. Hit it, Ross. Well, our jer journey started in Manchester, England, and uh, we flew over. <laughs> and, and I don't like flying. Don't you? No. <laughs> And if you're nervous flying, people always say to you, don't they? Well, if your number's up, your number's up. What if it's the pilot's number's up? <laughs> Why get me involved? I know you're going to run the clip, but are, are, the, are the US audiences are they different, so much different than the UK audiences? Are they a little more rambunctious or easier to work? Uh, I, I find them, you know, like with, with the UK material, I mean, like, because I work the cruise ships, you know, I work to Australian, Canadians, Americans, you know, so with the American audience, I usually explain a few things before I give them the punchline. You know, I'll explain like, um, you know, no. you say standing in line, we say standing in a queue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll do a gag. So I've explained it before I've done the gag. Perfect. Exactly. No, it's hilarious though. I mean, I've seen Nick. Uh, I'm seeing, I'm and Terry, and Terry, you, you were supposed to come, but you were really ill with flu, weren't you? Yeah, I got really sick at that time. We were going to come up to the show. We were both, uh, we were just, Anne and I were both bummed out. I mean, aside from, uh, aside from just uh, wanting to see you, I wanted to see the show. And, um, but, uh, you know, the video looked great. But, um, you know, it, it's amazing because you see, you see so many great comics on both sides of the water and you do the material and sometimes it just dies. I've never seen you die, Mick. I mean, it doesn't matter where it is. It could be a bunch of 20 year olds. It could be on a ship. It could be Brits, Americans, and I've just, you've just killed them everywhere. Mick, did you know Johnny Mac? Say again, Say Mike. Did you know Johnny Mac, comedian in the UK? Johnny, yes, yes, yes. Uh, his, yeah. his, son, his uh, son, Paul McDonough, is watching right now. A good buddy, Paul oh, from right, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I've, uh, I've worked with him a few times, many, many years ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, let's see. I, I went, we got Richie on video, but I don't know if Richie can hear us. Richie, can you hear us? Well, he can hear us. We just can't hear you. There's a little video on there. Um, there's a little button that says press the sound and we're going to get on there eventually because we got some amazing questions and uh, stuff to, to hear about Richie and his amazing career. Oh, yeah. uh, hey, hey Mick, there's a question for you from one of the viewers. It's John Martin and he says he wants to know if it'll cost him any money to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, an, he's another uh, Scouse comic. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, 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 is, is renowned for not spending any money. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know he's, uh, he's an old guy in front of American audiences that kills it. But Mick, um, Mick has had such a wide career. There was a TV show in the 70s called The Comedians that had what I think are all the greats. I'm 61, so people like Bernard Manning and Freddie, you know, uh, Freddie was on there and... Uh, um, and Mick, of course, and so many of them that were amazing. It was such a great it, show. That it started. It started in 1972, right? Yeah, that's when it started, and then it was so popular that it went. It went to Blackpool. It did 25 weeks at the North Pier. Then it went to the London Palladium and did like 35 weeks there. And it was so popular that. The, they brought it back in 1979-80 and they added three comics and the three that they added was Roy Walker, Stan Borman and myself. Right. So we went on the original, everyone thinks I was on the originals because I, I was the only bald one and I was the youngest <laughs> and they all had perms. <laughs> it's funny. Funny. People come up to me now and they say, aren't you supposed to be dead? <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Well, after the, after the comedians, I know, uh, I think he did the Royal Variety. He, he, he did that once, he did it more than once. Mick. Yeah, I did it. It was Peter Kay um, who was comparing. He was uh, linking the show. Right. And he phoned me up. He phoned me up and he said, we need someone 
not to be on the show, just to link six minutes to link in between Penn and Teller and Singing in the Rain, the musical. Because from Penn and Teller, they had to get all the water jets in to do all the Singing in the Rain stuff. Right. So I said, yeah, I'll come, I'll, I'll come do it. So I went and did it. And uh, I did really well. I mean, I, I, I did do tremendously well. Six minutes. Anyway, I didn't do the walk down. I didn't meet anybody. I just went straight home. And two weeks later, I was in London doing a gig. And I got a phone call and they said, your bit was that good that we're putting you in. So uh, that was the reason I wasn't supposed to be on the show. They put it in. So that's... Well, and I remember it, and Mick is famous, and I've got a question about this, but <laughs> Richie just put Zoom sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Richie. Um, I, I, we, we, just to touch on this, if we can't get Richie on today, we'll, we're, we're going to get him on the show tomorrow. We're going to work out this uh, internet stuff. But um, I know we were all excited to talk to Richie about so much stuff, but uh, we're still working on it. So we're still trying to get it done. Uh, Mick is is famous for uh, a skit that he put together um, that he did on the Royal Variety performance. And anyone who knows Mick Miller, in fact, someone just came on and says, ask Mick to do the Noddy sketch. But Noddy was, um, was a, a, an English kids program. And uh, well, we're gonna cut to video for it. We've got about a 35 second video here of uh, Mick's interpretation of the guy doing Noddy. Go ahead and hit that video. Imagine a fellow on the radio doing the Noddy program for kids, and he hates kids. He needs kids like a moose needs a hat rack. <laughs> He's been doing this for 20 years, every Monday morning on the radio, Noddy program for kids, hates kids, alcoholic. Don't forget it's on the radio. <laughs> Morning, kids. It's a Noddy show. Are you all listening to your radios? Well, what does little Noddy do today? He wakes up, doesn't he? Goes in the bathroom for a wash. Can you hear Noddy filling the sink with water? <laughs> <laughs> little Noddy's got a big sink, hasn't he? <laughs> he said, oh, sod it, I'll have a bath. Then he goes downstairs for his breakfast. Oh, there's a milkman. <laughs> Pours himself a cup of tea. And he poured himself some toast. <laughs> and a runny egg. And then he got in, got in his car. <laughs> and he's going on in his hauling days. But how long, how did you come up with the idea and why? It was, it was 1975 and I was working in South Africa. And I was trying to death. I was on this show and uh, they just didn't like me at all. And I was dying, and there was no TV there then. And I went up to my room, and the only thing they had was radio. And I used to do the show, die. You know, it's like when you, no one wants to know you. So with a ball dead, you can't hide. So um, I went up to my room, and I had a bottle of gin that I'd got duty free. And I opened it, and I put the radio on, and it was World Service. And it was Listen With Mother, and it was the Noddy show. And she said, well, what does Noddy do today? Well, I got a glass and poured the gin. That's what he does today. And I drank it. And then what's... And before I got absolutely slaughtered, I wrote it down. And I'm glad I did. Well, it's brilliant. Mike, have you seen it? I just now, and it, it's wonderful. I mean, it, it, it's, it's wonderful. I had never seen it before. Terrific stuff. Yeah, it's, it, it's great. And it, to be honest, Mick, it, it's years since I've seen you work. Um, going back to 92 on the pier, I still tell people, no one gets it now, but I remember you walked on stage and said, 
whatever happened to white dog shit? And I, I just cracked up because it's just, it's true. You know, so I'm absolutely, uh, absolutely brilliant. Hey, um, Mike, I've got a question for you. And it's a question that's come up on the, on the feed here. Um, two questions in one, really. As a booking agent slash talent buyer, whichever one, your choice, what would you say was A, the most rewarding part about it and the most challenging part about it? Because I know I've got my answers to, the, to them uh, and they're probably the same as you, but what would you say was the most rewarding and the most challenging? Well, the... the uh... The most rewarding is really doing all, all the all the pre work, building up to the show, watching the ticket sales happen, uh, building up to the date, counting down to the show time, seeing the audience reaction, and then looking over and seeing the venue manager or the venue owner or whoever's face smiling and beaming. And I think that's probably, I mean, I remember the one time, and this is going back probably 25 years and it was an eddie money show and and there was five thousand people and and uh the audience was just going crazy and and, and the beaming look on on uh, the venue's uh, manager's face was everything that that meant everything the, the most challenging of course is we deal with intangibles we deal with people and and sometimes that changes day by day so it's yeah. not uh, you know, Terry, you know as well as I do, if we, if we had a widget we were working with, it would be the same. But, you know, it, it, it's people change and you just have to learn how to adjust and how to how to punt sometimes and how to go out and catch a long pass. So it's... No, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, the, it's like you, the most rewarding part is, I, I think for me on a, maybe a smaller level, because I know you, you buy and pre present some big, big shows, big talent. And um, it's not an area that I'm in, but um, I know for me, when you successfully navigate to be able to fill someone's calendar, because that in itself, when you're representing an act, is it's so challenging because there's so many dynamics. If you're a, if you're a comic, if you're a piano entertainer, you're going for thirty jobs out there, and there's. 50 guys wanting them, you know, so right. to, be able to, to fill a calendar that is really re rewarding because I think like you, I've been on the other side of that fence to just want a gig. Absolutely, Terry. And, and it's, it's funny, people probably don't know you and I have, have, have been acquaintances and friends for over close to 30 years, I think. Yeah. And, and when, when you and Ann were first performing and we had so many mutual friends in the old day, but we've seen those days where we're trying to fill a calendar for ourselves. And so it fits the same thing. When when an artist we're representing or or talent and you see the potential and you're trying to to uh, uh, not only fill their schedule, but but help increase their revenue and make their life a little better and let and then let people enjoy hopefully what we brought to them, you know, but uh, um, it, it can be a very rewarding life. I think. Absolutely. And of course, some of my attention uh, now has uh, you know, turned to uh, representing Nick, my son, with his uh, original oh, song. He just, um, he just wrote this song, What is Earth Without Heart, which is about the current thing. I know you comment on it, Mike. And um, so that's fun too, because you try not to be dad. But it's very, you can't not be dad, you know. And I've looked at the song and go, you know what, this is these are lyrics that you can be proud of. I, I can be proud of, aside from what where it goes. So that's another part of the rewarding part for me. Oh, yeah. well, and Terry, you still, you, you know, you, you've got, you're, you're such a talent. I mean, you really are, you know. And, and I know people know you for being an agent and a promoter and a producer. But as an entertainer yourself, I mean, it's fantastic. I, I remember our good friend Jeremy La Rochelle, who was with our company for so many years, and now went to work for Virgin Voyages, but yeah. Jeremy caught you guys one night and was blown away. I mean, yeah. he just thought it was fantastic, you know? And, yeah. uh, you know, so, I mean, it, it, it comes from that. And when, when you see uh, someone like, uh, you know, like, like Mick, who's been around 
and doing this and, and having so much success. And I'm reading the comments as they're going by on my phone here. And his fan base is unbelievable. I, I, I think after this conversation, we should look at a U.S. tour for Mick because he's obviously got uh, the people here to come see him. Well, this is interesting. So let's start, let's let's talk business while he's on it. <laughs> Mick, um, <laughs> we're, we're going to bring Mick over here next year for a land tour, uh, and there's such a massive base of people that know Mick Miller, UK based as well. So I, I think after this, Mike, you and I jump on a call and make it happen. Absolutely. I, know Mick, I think I know Mick would love that. Yeah, but I met some lovely people in Vegas when I did, uh, you know, the show. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I met Lance Burton. Um, well, Mike Vegas. Mike knows and Lance then, well. And then I met him uh, two months ago in Blackpool. He came over to perform at the uh, Magicians Conference. Oh, fantastic! Can you uh, hear me Richie. now? Oh, hang on a second. We may have we may have Richie. Richie, can you hear us? I have just landed on the freaking moon. Holy crap! Well, we've had this is going to be a longer show, but it's all right. We'll split it into two when we when we air it. So, <laughs> viewers, we got Richie Canada with us. Richie, how are you? I am so freaking frustrated right now. <laughs> uh, so. it, took me, it took me 50 years to learn the saxophone. Uh, that This was way harder just to get on a Zoom, uh, uh, the Zoom broadcast. Awesome. I think we're all struggling with internet today. But um, so all the people who viewed. You know what it was? What I could tell you just quickly, on my preferences, my, my mic was not turned on on my phone. Is so right? I was seeing you guys. You guys are having a grand old time, and I'm I'm screaming here trying to get on audio. But here well, I am. The, the timing of the show can be all about you. Know, it looks like Mick's got his sax out, ready you for you. You missed me playing. You missed me playing. Oh my goodness! Look, it's an it's a tenor too. What the heck? All, all that that nice <laughs> graphic. Stan, it's an ornament. What is that? <laughs> it's oh, an ornament. Goodness. Oh, it's, it's, it's an honor. You're killing me, bro. You're killing me. <laughs> so, uh, for those, um, I know there's a lot of Mick Miller fans on here. Richie, Richie Canado has finally uh, figured out the Zoom stuff and he's on with us. Richie is a iconic sax player. Um, obviously, was uh, on all those amazing albums, Turnstiles, Stranger, so on and so on and so on. Um, but since I think the early 80s uh, has had his own recording studio, Cove City, and a lot of famous people recorded there, I believe. Is that right, Richie? Oh, yeah. We've had uh, quite a number of great people from uh, Ray Charles, of course, Billy, Celine Dion, J-Lo. Um, it's, been, it's been a great run for us. It really has. I've won Oscars and Grammys out of here. We've done five one mixes for Dreamgirls in the movie Chicago. And uh, it's been a great run for us. 36 years I've been here. Good for you. Good for you. I know Nick's planning on going over there. And I love talking about little known things. Nick, 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 Nick almost made it. <laughs> <laughs> I also um, recently discovered that you toured with the Beach Boys. Is that right? Yes, for years, for 15, 20 years. Wow. Was that in the 90s? Is that, am I right? Yep. Yep, for many, many years. I've been with them. I've played with them. I've recorded with them. Uh, it was a great run. Uh, they've taken, they were the great, greatest to be out on the road with. They were tremendous and tremendous in the studio. I had great times with them. Really yeah, great time. Richie, you're not going to, you may not remember, it's a few years ago, but we did a show with you and Al Jardine and uh, uh, Dean Torrance in Scottsdale. Oh, yeah. About oh, yeah, right. Al Jardine, family and friends we were, right? Yep, that's correct. I never a lot of fun. Yeah, that was great. And Dean was on it with us, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. Ah, wow, great. Where, where, where was that show? Out West? That was at Talking Stick Resort in uh, the showroom at Talking Stick Resort oh, in Scottsdale, great. Arizona. Yeah, that was actually... That, see, that band was the, the, uh, the Beach Boy band. And when the Beach Boys broke up and Mike Love reformed it without everybody. The Beach Boy band basically went with Al. That was Billy right. Hetchy was on that from Dino, Desi and Billy. Yep. Uh, Ed Carter, uh, Bobby Figueroa, uh, yep. myself. It was really a great band. 
Yeah, Billy Henshaw lives here in Vegas, Jill, doesn't he? Yes. Oh, yes, he does. Yep. Matt Jardine, Al yep. Jardine, of course, you know. So yep. it was wonderful. Uh, it was, a great show. Yeah, it was great. It really was. It was a lot of fun. We we toured pretty a, a long time with that band. That was pretty pretty much a lot of fun for a long time. That's way cool. That's cool. And we've got a bunch of you. I think our, uh, I think the number of saxophone players is just like quadrupled in the last five minutes because you're on here, Richie. So awesome. we've, got bunch, we've got a bunch of them. Um, but the uh, question there, someone just asked, what was your, mo your most memorable show and or venue, Richie? You want to dig back and uh, you well, most the, memorable show? There, it was, for, you know, for different countries, uh, you know, the, a memorable show was playing the Sydney Opera House. We were the first band to play the Sydney Opera House uh, back in uh, 1970. Wow, let's see, five or six, right. uh, somewhere around there. And uh, it was a lot of fun to do that. Um, and uh, are you guys still with me? I'm getting a call. Well, we've got you. Yeah, we've, uh, we've got your audio, but no video because the call's coming in. Yeah, let this call go away. Let me decline this call. Uh, we should be getting me back in a second. Here we are. Okay. Um, but that was that was a great one. But probably the, the most memorable one for me was uh, at Madison Square Garden. And it was my mom's 80th birthday. And my dad had uh, just uh, passed away. And I went into her closet and I got my dad's sports jacket and I put it on. And, I, and the first song I actually played and recorded with Billy was New York State of Mind. So on the Turnstiles record. So I got my dad's sports jacket, went center stage and played New York State of Mind. And I played it for my mom at Madison Square Garden on her 80th birthday. Oh, man. Nice. Come on. I mean, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't script that. That just happened, you know? That's, that's awesome. No, yeah. I have goosebumps. I know. So then she, she was all goo goo ga ga. She was, she, it was, it was great. Uh, I, it was a great moment for uh, my family. My whole family was there. Uh, Shirlene, my wife, and my son, and, and my brother, and then my sister. They were all were there, and it was pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Good for you. That's a, that's a great story. And of course, um, <clears throat> that album was, was phenomenal. Uh, my favorite, I think, was the next album, which was Stranger. Um, and um, the iconic solos on, uh, on scenes is still, Stuff people talk about now. We, we, in fact, we've got Chris, Chris Wiley on here who's a sax player that works with us. And um, he's been going, ask him about scenes, ask him about scenes, ask him about scenes. <laughs> scenes, scenes uh, is his name Chris? Yeah, Chris. Chris, yeah. his Italian restaurant was a really good spot for me because I got to play in all the holes. And then Billy had asked me to play clarinet on that as well. So I played the clarinet solo in the, in the middle of that. Um, and as we all know, as saxophone players, it's great to play the saxophone. It's difficult to play the clarinet, and especially if you don't play it on a regular basis. And he had said to me, let's put some clarinet on this. I went, oh, boy. And so I did, and it worked out great. And that's probably one of my favorite songs. I get to really blow on it. I play a solo. I got some really cool lines in it. I got my clarinet solo in it. And it happens to be my favorite, one of my favorite songs besides of New York State of Mind. And it's also Billy's, which is really cool. Very, very cool. Hey, well, we're going to cut to video um, because I want uh, everyone on here just to see a little bit of, uh, of Richie in action. Go ahead, Ross, and hit that video. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh he's always he's my biggest safety net, bro. <laughs> I think we're live again. Um, it's amazing stuff. I, I'm going to move on a little bit because um, we are uh, with the Billy Joel uh, stuff. We've obviously been following. I think uh, Nick and I, my son, have seen I don't know twelve concerts or something. But I saw a video. Um, I saw a video of the Lords of 52nd Street um, and 
it was brilliant to see you and Ross and Liberty up there, uh, but just the vibe of the band. The, the whole vibe of the band was so cool. Mike, I don't know if you've seen, have you seen Lords of 52nd Street? No, I haven't, I haven't. It's so good, I, I can't say enough about it. The, uh, the energy on that, and you can see it in their faces, the three of them, the whole band's up there, obviously. But uh, well, go ahead, Rich. The way we did it back then, I've, I'm the musical director, and I've picked really, really great guys to play this music the way we did it back then. You know, Billy's band right now that he's using, there's like 14 people on stage, you know, it's it's a big uh, production. Our thing is rock and roll, and this is what our audience really, really love, and, and they're coming out to see us. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, you know, we brought you out to Phoenix last time. Uh, last, uh, it was awesome, by the way. Phoenix gig was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was really fun. It was, it was fun. But Anne, my wife, and Nick and Julia, we came out and saw you uh, in... Uh, in um, Brooklyn, was it? I think it was Brooklyn, or on on uh, Long, uh, Long it, Island. It was, it was in Brooklyn. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we've lost your video. Maybe you got another call coming through. But um, but that show was good, Mike. We'll have to um, we'll have to check. I, I would love you and I to be sat in the audience because perfect. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Great. So good. So so good. Um, this has been a great show. We've gone on later, but we finally mastered the technology. I would, um, oh, hang on a second. Uh, we've got a couple of questions, questions on here. Um, okay, uh, a question for Mick Miller. Um, we've got a scouser on here saying, is Mick a red or a blue? Red. He's a red stick. Yeah. <laughs> no, Mike, he means the red of Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> He's a red. Um, oh, you know, Maureen Smith is on there. She wants us to play a Lords of 52nd video. Don, I'm going to ask our producer. Oh, we're going to talk about the Yankees. I'm going to give you some crap about that. Second, Richie. That's like United. That's like United here in New York, bro. It is. So, um, hey, Ross, can you get a Lords of 52nd Street video up there? I don't know if you can or not. Ross is our producer. Okay, just let me know if you can. We're going to try and do that. Mick. Uh, just let me talk about a couple of things. Mick Miller has a, a new DVD out. Uh, it's called Old Cool, Old Cool, Mick Miller, Old Cool Comedy. And um, I've seen clips of it. I haven't seen the whole one. And it's brilliant. And uh, is that available now, Mick? <clears throat> yeah, I did it in a, a comedy club in Liverpool, you know, my hometown. Okay. I went and did, uh, yeah, there's a great... Um, great comedy club in Liverpool. So uh, I love comedy clubs. So yeah. uh, we thought we'd do a DVD there, you know, cause it's nice and, you know, you can al almost eat the audience, you know. Right, yeah, but always the best environment. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I've got tons of questions coming in on the feed now. So many of them. So here's, here's one, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so here's one, Richie, the, uh, the booker at uh, Happy Trails golf resort where you played says the lords of 52nd street was the best show i've ever booked at my venue mm -hmm. there you go yeah <laughs> and that's awesome yeah I tell and, you, it, it was a great gig yeah it was it was it was fun my wife Anne just says when are the lords of 52nd street back in arizona but i guess she needs to ask me about for that no. that's that's <laughs> yeah you you need to do that right away when we get off the phone book us there because we had a great gig there no, it was, it, it was fun. Um, Nick asked, of all the guest stars Billy brought on stage with him, who was the most special or memorable for you, Richie? Uh, in the years of us playing, um, oh, wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> you like throwing you in the deep end. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, you know, back in the day, we had some really cool things going on, too, um, where, believe it or not, like, uh, um, we had friends, like Phoebe Snow was a really good friend of ours, and I ended up uh, working, I don't know if you remember her, yeah. but uh, I end, ended up uh, producing her record, and Liberty, myself, and Doug played on her record. There's, there's, been, there's been so much great uh, camaraderie over the years and uh, with people. Uh, it's just, it goes on and on. And you know something, it's not stopping, it's, it's growing, mm. which is really, really good, because I think that real music will prevail. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's something dangerous about rock and roll, and when we get on stage, it's, 
it's a little dangerous because you don't know what's going to happen because there's no space bars up there. There's no grids. There's no auto tuning. There's no melodyning. It's us making music. And I think people, and this is about a heartbeat, you know, what's happening right now, we're all socially distancing ourselves from people. And it's like, I can't wait to go out and hug my friends and family, you know, and music is that we are humanitarians and we bring music, we bring smiles to people's faces. And over the years, the people have joined us and played with us. It's been great. And it's just getting better. Absolutely. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the doing more. I really, really am. And you've seen me play live. You know, I reach out. Well, that's what I was referring to when I said the end, which was telling Mike about the energy. The energy of um, the Lords is, is like you've gone back 35 years and you're watching the bill at the beginning. You're looking when you're taught with the turnstiles and stranger, and you get that vibe, you know, um, and it's and it's and it's so good. Um, there's a couple of other questions here, but I, I need to say some. So Mike is a Liv Mike is a Liverpool fan, and uh, and Liverpool haven't won the Premier League in England for about 190 years, or something. There you go. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, and my team, Manchester United and Liverpool, um, we do not like each other. Okay, and Liverpool. <laughs> Liverpool are racing away with the league and somehow they're not going to win it because they're not going to finish the league this year. So Mike and I are constant, constantly giving each other hell about sports. So when you talk about your sports team, Richie, which is the Yankees, okay? Oh, oh yeah. So I, um, I, I was, not so much now, uh, but back in 2001, a big Arizona Diamondbacks fan. And did, bad, we, did we go any bad further? Sell, bad sell, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, um, I was at game seven, actually, and it was, I'd never witnessed an atmosphere like it. That was not good for you, but it was an amazing, uh, amazing Moment. It hurt. It, it just hurt again. Okay. I bet. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we just uh, we just uh, uh, were in uh, uh, spring training with the Yankees, and I got to play the Star Spangled Banner for them for one of their games. Did you really? Yeah, I, I get to play for them a lot, actually, which is really cool. Nice, nice. And and you know that I'm Bernie Williams' musical director from the Yankees. Oh, uh, sorry. Right. Uh, Bernie Williams, the uh, center fielder for the Yankees over the years. Okay. Uh, He's a jazz, a Latin jazz guitar player, and I'm his um, uh, musical director. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, many, so many stories. There's a question for Mick on here from Justin Tundervary. It says, uh, is the story about you offering to show Bernard Manning around Jersey when you were doing a summer season true? Yes, it is. It is true. Okay. I don't know what the story is, but there you go, Justin. It's true. <laughs> Um, question from Anne on here. Richie, what projects are you working on right now? Um, well, we have to be very cautious about whatever we're doing. Uh, the, the one we're working on is uh, remotely from a gentleman in uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale right now. And he's uh, written 20 songs and Liberty and I played on his record. And uh, we're in the process of doing overdubs and mixing. Matter of fact, I'm going to play a saxophone solo for him tomorrow. And then what we do is through wave files, if you know what that is, it's through yeah. the internet. We send files back and forth. He listens uh, either in, on a wave format or an MP3 format, and we fix, we tweak, and we're kind of doing everything remote. We're being very, very cautious about this crazy coronavirus, mm -hmm. and um, you know we're, we're we're doing the protocol, which is making sure everything is uh, is uh, clean and antiseptic down. And uh, so the project they're working on is this one gentleman from, uh, from Fort Lauderdale. We have about 12 that are waiting to get in and do uh, recordings with us, but just got to hold off on seeing what's happening with this, with this uh, crazy virus. Yeah, we're, gonna, uh, we're, we're definitely going to be um, making some good music when it's over. Here's a question for all three. You're going to have to think about this one. Um, the question is, uh, from a viewer, what is your favorite album ever? Mm. Not any particular artist, pick one album for any reason. What is your favorite album? Who wants, to, who wants that one first? Right. I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you mine while you guys are thinking about it, because it, it would be a, probably a, 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 uh, 
mix between uh, Jellyfish, um, who's a brilliant wow. band. Brilliant. Wow. Band. You know Jellyfish? Oh, Richie, they're phenomenal. Yes. Phenomenal, phenomenal band. Yes. I love it. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And uh, you know, Nick was just telling me that they've, um, you know, they broke up a few years ago and they've got a, three of them have started a, a, a new band. Um, and I forgot the name, it's something quartet. Let, who, uh, was the, who was the one that went out solo? They opened up for us with the Beach Boys. Well, I can tell you now that <laughs> Nick's probably gonna come on here and fire those questions out. Um, in fact, we were, out, we were listening to the album yesterday. Um, the Licorice Quartet is the new, is the new name. And, oh yeah? Um, and the name of the lead singer that went out on his own, uh, uh, they'll come up with that answer soon. But was, it seems it the, was it the drummer or was it the keyboard player? The keyboard player, I believe. Keyboard player, yeah. yeah. Uh, John Stamos turned me on to them and my son and I, I mean, they're very queen, they're very Beach Boys, they're, uh, they're amazing. Oh, they're freaking amazing, I love them. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so that's an unusual one. Um, and then going back, uh, Sgt. Pepper's was a big album for me. Of but course. I think, I think the one I have to choose, Roger Joseph Manning Jr. was the guy who went solo, Richie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was him. But um, I think the album for me is Songs in the Key of Life, Stevie Wonder. Oh, I was 13, 14 when it came out and uh, still, you know, still stunning. So, Mike, what's yours? You know, you... I've obviously, Sgt. Pepper's is in the top 10. I mean, right there. It's so tough to say your favorite because we love all music, you know? Yeah. But uh, there, there, was, there was a great Beach Boys album. Uh, Smile was, was wonderful. Great stuff they did. Yeah. Um, I love the old recordings. I love the old work when Carol Kay on bass on some of the early Beach Boy recordings. So clever, so well thought out. Um, the Stranger, the Billy Joel album that that Richie, my God, you're, you're thank you're, you, bro. Solo on just the way you are, everything you, the work you did on that was so. And Liberty DeVito became one of my favorite drummers from that album right there, just everything on it. But uh, you, you love it all, you know. I I I couldn't say I have a favorite. I, I, I love country. I love rock and roll. I love jazz. I love Sergio Mendez. It was such fun stuff in the old days. So Lonnie Hall, Brazil 66. Oh my God. Herb Albert and Lonnie Hall play at the Vibrato Club, Herb's Club in Hollywood all the time. Wow. You know? And then I mean, you go there on a weekend, there's Lonnie Hall and Herb Albert playing. How fun is that? Uh, awesome, man. How about like uh, uh, Carol King, Tapestry? Remember oh. that? Oh my Classic. God. Amazing. Classic. Yeah. What about you, Mick? You got a favorite album? Uh, Slipknot. the Beatles. Say again. Slipknot. Who? What? <laughs> You've got me on that. I don't know what you're saying. Slipknot. Slipknot. Oh, Slipknot. Slipknot. Yes, yeah, Slipknot. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, uh, we talk about Liberty. Uh, we've been, um, we're looking at uh, Liberty's clearance and time they schedule and he's going to try and get come on the show. That's an exciting show for me. We've got three, what I think are three of the all time best drummers, certainly three of my favorites Liberty DeVito, Billy Joel, Danny Serafin from Chicago, and Gordy Marshall from the Moody Blues. And uh, we're hoping to bring that show uh, on Tad Talk. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Liberty and Danny are friends. You know that, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And uh, and phenomenal, both of them. We saw, uh, well, of course, we saw Liberty when we came to see you, uh, Richie, in, uh, in Brooklyn. But I saw Danny on uh, on the on the Blue Cruise last year, and that guy is a monster as well. Just a monster. Yeah, uh, he is. Uh, uh, he's always been, you know, I remember Chicago Transit Authority <clears throat> when they first you came out. And uh, they were, that's one of, I forgot to mention, that's one of my favorite albums too. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the first number introduction and then into uh, beginnings and all those great tracks yeah. on that. So well done. Well, you know, well, we, Peter Cetera Peter sang on My Life with us. That song, wow. My Life with Billy, yeah. It was my soul, oh, Peter right? Cetera. Yeah, he, he sang with us backgrounds. Well, that's some good trivia. Yeah. I like that. 
Uh, we've hit the hour mark, which is half an hour more than we normally do on the show. So I want to go on for another hour, but we can't. I'd love to invite all of you back on the next one. This has been great. Thanks to everyone for per persevering with these, uh, these uh, tech problems we've had. On tomorrow's show, um, we've got uh, three completely different guests and going to be an equally good show. Kellyanne Gower, who is a West End star, great vocalist, and was in the movie Les Miserables. She'll be with us along with Ivan Purcell, who is hilarious um, juggler, but so much more. And, uh, and Matt Marcy, uh, one of the funniest magicians I've known. Those are our three guests tomorrow. And um, come back and see it. You can get us on our YouTube channel, which is Tad Talk. Not Ted Talk, but Tad Talk. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for watching. Go and like our Tad Management um, Facebook page. You can see these live every day. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. Mike. Mick, Richie, thank you so much for persevering God bless with you guys. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Paul.